Hi, I'm Jeannie Kolkloff, the owner of Riveting Trips Active Luxury Travel Design, your Condé Nast top travel specialist, and your cultural ambassador to Korea. So today we're going to talk about Korean snacks and quick bites. So when you're traveling, you probably don't want to always have a fine dining experience. You want to pick up some local snacks. So I'm going to show you some of the more popular Korean snacks. This isn't a totally extensive list, but this will give you an introduction. So if you're in Korea during the summer, and this is at the very tail end of summer right now that I'm recording this, you will want to stop and have pingsu. So the more popular one is called pop pingsu, which is the red bean shaved ice. But if you're not a lover of red bean, which I understand there are some weird ones of you out there, Dave Chang, um, you can get other kinds of shaved ice, right? There are a few places that are really famous for shaved ice. But any kind of bingsu is awesome. It's a cool, it's a very refreshing way to cool down during the heat of the Korean summer. So if you see this bingsu, this one is just shaved ice with some strawberry jam on it. Really, it's pretty simple. And then this one is the more traditional pop bingsu here. If you look on the very top, those are slices of duck or mochi and red bean. And then it looks like chocolate shavings. And then if you want, you can have a ice cold coffee drink. Something that is available year round is tteokbokki and it's usually you see it the spicy way and it is available all year round. I know this seems weird like to eat something spicy, but Koreans do like to eat hot things during the summer too. And so this is more of a street food. You can find it in some kinds of restaurants, not like fancy restaurants. And then you can also get it unspicy. Um, usually the non-spicy version is made with a little bit of beef, like shredded beef. Another one of my favorite, favorite foods is the KFC or Korean fried chicken. If you've been watching a lot of K-dramas lately, you've seen that they are popping up. And a popular way to do it is called chimek, which is the fried chicken with some mek or mekju, which is Korean for beer. So if you want, you can find a more upscale establishment that does chimek, or you can do one of those pojang matcha along the Han River in Seoul and just have some fried chicken and beer with your friends. Here's another street food, or it doesn't have to necessarily be street food. It's mandu or Korean style dumplings. Usually they are filled with meat. Usually it's pork or a beef blend. So you should ask if it's a vegetarian. But if you are a meat lover, you'll love mandu. And this one is one of my favorite snacks to eat. Koreans, when they go on a picnic or they go on a hike, they usually make food, right, or a snack. And a lot of times the Korean parent will make kimbap. And kimbap is still one of the more affordable snack foods you can get out there. You can get a couple of rolls for $2 or something. And there are different fillings. This is a traditional filling here. You'll see shredded carrots, vegetables. Sometimes they put egg, um, pickled radish, meat, and then obviously cucumber and roll, rolled up with the rice. It's like kind of like Korean sushi, but without any fish. So sometimes you see this, the omuk, which is fish cake. It may look like this or it may be kind of elongated and shredded. Fish cake comes in all different shapes and sizes. Sometimes it's sitting in a warm broth during the cold winter. You know, it really depends if you like it spicy in a broth. It is a nice palate cleanser after a long night of carousing and drinking. And you can see here in this picture there are chicken feet in the middle it says takba in korean and then on the right of the picture is the mandu or the dumplings and on the left are the other kinds of fish cake you can see these ones are sitting in the broth right so you can always mix and match this is obviously from a food cart in seoul or somewhere else in korea and you can ask the woman like i want this much i want that and if you're brave enough you should be okay so Koreans love pancakes. And when you think of pancake, it's not like a crepe. They're all, for the most part, in this way, savory crepes. So this one is a vegetable pancake, you can see, with some kind of flour batter. There are carrots, there's squash, green onions, and things like that. One of my absolute favorite pancakes is this one, the hemul pajan, which is a seafood pancake. And usually Koreans will order that as like an appetizer to share before a big meal at a restaurant. It's crispy on the edges. It goes great with a glass of beer or a bottle of beer or Korean soju or a cocktail, but it's just one of those kind of crunchy, crispy snacks that I love to eat. 
Okay, I'm going to be honest here. This is not one of my favorite Korean snacks, but it is popular with Koreans or some Koreans, and you'll see it on Korean dramas. It is the Korean version of a blood sausage. I'll just leave it at that. Try it if you like blood sausage. So you've seen ramen around. Ramen in Korean is called ramyeon. And usually it is the spicy version here. Like you can see the spicy version of ramen. Korea is known for its prepackaged ramen. You can go find in any convenience store. In fact, Korea, like Japan, you can get one of those cup of noodles and get some hot water and sit at the, what they call peony jam or like their convenience store, like a 7-Eleven and just have that as your meal, right? For a couple of dollars. So that's a very inexpensive way to travel, see some, do some people watching and kind of get a little bit of the culture. So here's another snack that's really popular or has become very ubiquitous around outside of Korea. It's the kim, right? Or seaweed. It's one of my favorite treats. My kids love seaweed. You can now find it prepackaged. Growing up, I had to make the seaweed labor snacks for myself. You know, you get a big sheet of unseasoned labor or seaweed and then sprinkle some or coat it with sesame oil and then sprinkle with salt and then roast it in the oven and then go and cut it. And now you can buy these prepackaged goodies for you to take on your trip. Visiting in Korea in the winter was one of my favorite times because it always signals different treats on the on the street. And I guess now you can get this any time of the year, but a winter treat, you know it's hit winter when you see hot dog and the vendor selling hot dog. So usually they come with one of two kind of fillings. So it's like a sweet rice, sweet rice like duck um, dough. And then it, inside is usually either a little bit of brown sugar and a sesame seed paste, or sometimes they put walnuts and sugar, or sometimes they put red bean. Really, you should ask the vendor what is inside and then try according to your taste buds. If you love nuts, this is another good treat, right? Hodo kwaja, which is like a walnut cookie. So it's kind of like a, what's the best way to describe it? The outside, it's cooked in this um, kind of pancake-like batter. It's very soft and kind of sweet. And then it has, sometimes it has red bean and a little bit of walnut, chopped walnut. It's a really great snack in the winter and even in the summer, right? But I, or I do remember thinking about it in the winter. Another treat that you can find are these puff rice snacks. There's tons of rice snacks in Korea. My favorite one is that looks like a pancake or a flying saucer. It's not sweet at all. It's called bungtigi. But this one is if you have a little bit of sweet tooth and you like something a little bit crispy, it goes well with a tea. If you want to go to a traditional tea house, just ask me and I can recommend some places to go check out a traditional tea house. But it is really just a fun kind of tacky snack, right? If you like hard kind of uh, tacky or candy type snacks, these aren't very sweet. These are made with seeds usually. So you can see here there are black sesame seeds, the white sesame seeds. Here you have peanut snacks or you have kind of like, it's like the Korean version of a trail mix. It's really good. Um, because it's made of sesame seeds, it has high fat content. It's quite, gives you a lot of energy. And I do enjoy these snacks. So if you want to see where some of these snacks are available or some food markets, I'm going to give you three food markets you can visit on your next trip to Korea. The first one is the more famous one called Gwangjang Market, and it is where you might have seen profile on some Netflix shows or Hulu shows. Here are the spicy crabs that are marinated. You can go buy your fish from here if you want to. Another place to go check out are the panchan or the side dishes. You can see that Koreans, not all Koreans make all these panchan. Whenever you go to a Korean restaurant, all the side dishes that come, it's a lot of effort, right? And people don't really appreciate it. And a sign of wealth back then was to have all this panchan and your meat or your main source of protein plus the soup dish to finish. So you can see there's different kinds of panchan here. Kimchi, bean sprouts, spinach, mushroom, squash, right? And then here are some more like other kimchi and um, bean sprout type things and other root vegetables and more kimchi, kimchi galore, right? I, there used to be a kimchi museum in Seoul. I don't think it's open anymore, but there are over like a thousand types of kimchi. 
Another thing that is popular to eat in the market are the chun or pancakes. So you can see here there are hot or um, things with hobak. Sorry, hobak is squash, the one with the green. And then on the left, the lower left is the tubu or the tofu. That's it's not really a, not a pancake. That's called tubu chorim. That's been kind of sliced. That's tofu that's been sliced and then stewed a little bit. And then you have your fish can pancakes right there, and then you have other kinds of seafood pancakes in the back row. You can also try the fish at the local market here. And then one of the best things to try here is the pinta duck, which is the mung, mung bean pancake. So years ago when I first started traveling to Korea, they were not as big as this. I think a little bit of tourism, a little bit of YouTube, TV shows have made them much bigger and look like this. If you can get the ones that have seafood in it, but I think these ones for the most part are vegetarian. Seafood one or pork ones are really the best, to be quite honest. These ones, I think they do for the tourists. They're okay. I think I've had better, to be quite honest. So now we're going to move to another market. It's called Namdimun Market. And this is another one of these markets that's open almost 24 hours a day. It does sell not just food. It sells clothing. You can get eyeglasses there. You can get electronics there. So we'll just kind of take a little stroll through. And you can see that it is an open air market. And please note, if you do enter Namdimun Market, pay attention to which entrance you enter because there are so many entrances. And if you want to exit out the same entrance, you need to keep track. Otherwise, you will get lost and end up in another part of the city. Okay. So you can see here, there's an eyeglass shop alley, their electronics alley, clothing alley, all that. You can also get your children or yourself maybe hanbok here. You can also get hanboks at Gwangjang Market if you don't want to spend too much money. If you want to spend a little bit more, then obviously go into an upscale store. That's not a problem. Another thing that I've noticed when I go to Namdimun Market is that it is a place where other business owners will actually eat. So they will eat here yakitori, obviously, or kebab type foods. And then you can also get a sit down meal and you'll see ladies with these trays on their head carrying all this food and delivering it to the people, the vendors who are working at the market. So the last market that I want to profile for you today is the Noryangjin market and it's a seafood market. Really, if you're a seafood lover, check it out. You don't have to necessarily go to this market, but it does have quite a bit of food live seafood you can ask them to prepare stuff like abalone or spiny lobster for you and order it or just pick the fish that you want for your sushi or sashimi and they will prepare it for you right then and there it's kind of like the one in tokyo i hope you have enjoyed my short introduction of korean snacks and foods if you feel like i've left anything out or would like me to cover any other topics please put them in the comments below and i'll respond to them i love being the cultural ambassador to places like korea and anywhere else my clients go so if you need any help booking any trips please contact me at genie at rivetingtrips.com or just find me online and ping me there ciao ciao for now